Previously on The Great Ace Attorney. Can I ask what his reason was? Something even I'm not sure of. Wait, really? Even you aren't sure? I just do whatever Asuki tells me to do, really. He calls me his little sin bitch And now, back to grunting at people! Hello! The Sneako B. Back with some more The Great Ace Attorney. When we last left off, oh, Naruhodo, what are we gonna do? You just got fucking set up for murder again, didn't you, you silly little nugget? God, can't you just stay out of jail for two freaking seconds? Good God! Well, I, I, you guys did point out that the main reason why they're doing it this way is because he's not actually an attorney yet, so the only person you can really represent is himself in a trial. And yeah, I, I understand that, and, and, and you're right, that, that's true. It, in this instance, that'd really be the only way he'd be able to be a lawyer. But I still kind of wish that, like, I don't know, maybe after that last case, he just had become an attorney and gone on the boat with, uh, with the Sogi. Or they just got into Britain and became a lawyer. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping it's not the entire game. I mean, I feel like maybe after this case, he'll actually officially become an attorney. But don't you have to go to school and stuff for that, too? So I, I don't know. I'm not really sure how they're going to frame it from here on. Seems like we're really going along with Naruhodo here from his, you know sort of humble beginnings of defending himself to his less humble beginnings and still defending himself. <laughs> I mean, just, you know, watching him slowly become uh, the attorney he was always meant to be, right? But I don't know, I guess I guess I just sort of see like the, you know, having to defend yourself in court as sort of like a one and done, like, or like, all right, we had our, we had our trial, you know? I mean, Maya hasn't happened to her like, you know, once every game. I think it'd be a little much if Maya ended up getting uh, framed for murder like two or three times per game. Be like, Jesus Christ, Maya, get a hold of yourself. So, not, well, I understand within the context of the game, it still, it still brings me a feeling of, have can, can we done this already? <laughs> but that aside, we ran into uh, Suzuto and uh, Holmes, and they're my favorite characters in this so far, especially Holmes, who just in the single counter with them, I was like, oh my God, you know, shit, a ton of fun voicing you. And also just, they seem the most different out of everybody, you know? Like I said, I think Naruhoda feels a bit like an Apollo 2.0, you know? And I love Apollo, but I kind of, you know, like, we kind of been there. But I feel like Holmes and even Suzuto to some like, the fact that she picks you up and chucks you like that, like, I found that pretty, that's pretty damn funny. But Holmes definitely seems like a different kind of investigator than we've seen before. I mean, we've had Quirky, but, but we've never had British Quirky. <laughs> I don't know, it just seems like a lot of fun. By the way, you guys also point out, so the Speckle Band, first off, is, uh, is actually a real Sherlock Holmes story. Um, it's apparently one of the more famous ones. I, I, th I thought that one sounded familiar. What, what they were talking about at the beginning was basically an excerpt from the actual story. But what really made it hilarious was that the uh, false information that he just spouted at Naruhoto at the start was actually the exact information that he said in the book, which uh, made more sense then. Like in that, in that instance, it was actually correct, right? But in this instance, it makes no sense at all. It just makes him look like a complete idiot. That's funny. That's cute. I like that. But another interesting tip that you guys share with me uh, was involving the use of the Sherlock Holmes property and probably the direct reason why this didn't get released in the West. And Commander Zacton uh, put this pretty well last episode where they said, and now we have what is possibly the main reason why we didn't have get this game and a sequel to the entire Western regions, Sherlock Holmes. Not the character, since him and other characters our public domain, but rather the source material. You saw the intro at the beginning of the case. Well, that's one from one of the last 10 books of Sherlock Holmes, and they are not public domain, and, it, and it's an issue for some countries. Japan does have the rights to reference these old books, but some countries in the West do not. If this is true, according to Capcom in the West, then it's a shame because Sherlock Holmes is a great character in the AA series. Interesting. That's real interesting. Although I, I did see someone reply to your comment saying that apparently uh, the Speckled Band is actually is actually public domain. It's later cases, which also apparently draw inspiration from uh, real Sherlock Holmes cases. I see. Oh wow, wow, that's interesting. I, I thought it was just the the fact that they couldn't get away with saying this is not Japan, you know. And I thought maybe they're like, well, Americans can't understand that there are countries outside of their own country. <laughs> they can't possibly do it. I mean, that's what they've been doing for all the Ace Attorney games at this point. They keep saying it's, you know, fucking Japan of Fornia, when it's really just, just Japan without the Fornia. But no, it actually has to do with, like, some freaking uh, Kingdom Hearts Tarzan-level shit. <laughs> wow, that's, that's surprising. Man, you know, if it's just the... It makes me wonder, if it's just, like, the intros of the cases, like, couldn't they just not include them or, like, cut them out? All right, I guess the point, though, is still that the cases themselves still draw inspiration clearly from the source material, so they're like, oh, well, that's 
it's it's so ingrained in the game you can't take that out M maybe I, I don't know but either way that definitely kind of sucks that's really the reason yeah copyright can really can't just suck the fun out of anything can it but anyway commander's acting thank you so much for clarifying that and it's for that reason you are our comment of the day. By the way, some of you guys were laughing like, ah, Nico starts the ASO encounter, just the episode where Asogi dies. You know what? I, I still think it's gonna be, for, it's still gonna work. I still think Naruto's gonna bring up Asogi all the time, be like, I'm gonna do this in memory of Asogi. Yeah, Asogi, yeah. I don't think we're out of the woods yet. Although I also would be surprised if he also kind of starts directing these ellipsy names towards like other characters here. But all right, so we still have some stuff we need to examine here. Like, uh, is that a chicken leg or something? Those are the leftovers from last night's dinner. The roast chicken. Asogi didn't share any with me. Yes, it was quite delicious. Incidentally, did you happen to eat your meal on the floor? I'm not a pet dog, you know. I eat my chicken at the dining table, like an actual human. Odd, though. Look at that chicken bone fall on the floor. Oh, but didn't Kazuma hate chicken? I seem to remember as much. He despised it. In fact, he vehemently refused to even touch it last night. Who the fuck hates chicken? Scurry, I mean, aside from people like vegetarians and vegans and stuff. So being the hungry stowaway, I ate up every last bite of it. Oh, so that means Kazuma had likely been famished during his final night on Earth. Just before he perished. It was all your dumb fault. Thanks for putting it that way, Suza Zato. How immensely pitiful. I suddenly have a stomach and <laughs> stab after sh stab of sheer raw guilt. I should examine that. Uh, no, damn it. Oh, that's good. I can't I can actually skip things quickly uh, by just holding down my mouse or if this were a phone, holding probably holding in the screen. I examine this chair. Oh, no, I'm examining the thing over there. Just written in bold, unfaltering strokes. It's very reminiscent of a, of a sogi. His words, put to paper by none other than Kazuma himself. Are you able to look directly upon them without averting your eyes in shame? It's shame! Yes, of course I am. After all, I'm innocent. Spider the locked room. I mean, how, how dumb of a killer do you think I am that I would lock myself in here with him? There's a vent right over there. I crawl out that way. Also, I always love these instances. I mean, th this isn't the only Ace Tour game that does this. It's done this in probably every other one. So many times they're just like, like, you're the killer! But they, they never have, like, a motive. They're just like, well, the evidence says you're the killer. You, we have no motive. We, we can't figure out why you did it, but you fucking did it. <laughs> well, this comes back to that, huh? Uh, okay. What else I got left? Uh... The door! Oh, that's right, the, the lock. We rushed in here earlier. Broke that shit out. Hey. This door had been bolted tightly from inside the cabin. It's just a small, simple bolt. But it'd be impossible to break either out or in, as long as it was latched in place. Given the evidence so far, I don't blame Suzuzo for doubting me. Did she Suzuzo to toss that door? I bet she did when it came in. Sailor, stand back! I feel Susato's glare burning into the back of my neck. Ah! Say, do you ever read mystery novels? This is the part where they use a needle and a thread, thread to bolt the door from the outside. How very Dongaropa you sounding. An ingenious trick indeed. Yes, I do love reading mystery novels. Oh, hey, that's a new animation. It's got a little bookie. But since all the doors and general surroundings of the ship are made of iron, that trick wouldn't work here. Needles and thread can't cut through iron. <laughs> Now our glare feels more like needles digging into me. Ah! Asogi, help me! Huh? Look over there. It's that sailor. He wasn't there just a little while ago. That's exactly what I thought. How do people keep getting in here so sneakily? If you have any questions, perhaps you should see what he has to say. He might shout at me again, but I guess I should give it a shot. Oh, God. Hello, the hello there, sir. Sir. Oh? What's the matter now, Hodo? No, nothing. It's just that sailor standing over there by the door. For some reason, I feel like I've seen him somewhere before. Now you mention it, he does look a bit familiar. Hello, excuse me. 
Uh, yes, can I help you with something? Let me get a look at his face here. Oh my god! <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought it was going to be the Russian guy from the newspaper or something like he shaved his beard. No, it's... Host a dog, what are you doing here, you nugget? I definitely recognize that face. Oh, God, he's still coughing up his blood. Are we ever going to get an explanation for that? There's no doubt! Why, if it isn't today, I host a dog. So you're still going to show up, huh? I thought we'd, like, Sherlock Holmes would basically replace you, right? I just figured you were, like, a first-case guy. It has been some time. Not really, actually. Uh, why? Why are you here in a place like this? I could ask you the same question. I was so astonished that my heart stopped beating. You got framed for murder again? I know. Are you sure you didn't mean to say I thought my heart was going to stop beating? I've infiltrated the ship under special orders. Again? You really enjoy infiltrating, don't you? If it is within my power to do so, allow me to assist you in any way I can. Why do you have your arm up like you're still a freaking server? You're not- Oh, it's an old habit. I just can't stop. I can't put the arm down anymore. Detective j just might be the key to overturning the dire situation. Maybe. You need a nappy or something? No, I'm fine. I got my sleeve. Special orders. So what are your special orders this time around? Moreover, why are you dressed like that? And also, why are you bleeding out your mouth? Somebody ask, please! Like, wait, we asked that one time, and he's just like, I just do this sometimes. We're all just like, okay. Can you tell us? I'm terribly sorry. Huh? All the fault for this incident lies squarely upon my shoulders. Oh, what? Did you kill a Sogi? Host and Nag? I know, I'm just the worst. What? What do you mean, detective? My special orders were to guard a Sogi. Oh, well, you fucked up, man. You, you fucked up bad. The arrangements were made by Secretary Jigoku of the Ministry of Justice. I was to protect him from possible assassins so that he might reach Britannia unharmed. Assassins? He was in that much danger? Cheddar, cheese, and crackers! I do not know for sure, but what I do know is... Currently, there is much tension between the empires of the East and West. The Secretary of the Ministry told me to take every possible contingency into account. How could this be? Is it really possible? Cosma assassinated? Unlike most escort missions, I wasn't able to publicly divulge my identity as a bodyguard. Instead, I was forced to board the ship under the guise of a sailor. I feel like you're gonna be you're gonna be dressed up like somebody every time, all right? Except a detective. <laughs> Everything but a detective. I see. That's gonna be my thing, and also the bleeding out my face. From dawn till dusk, I kept watch over Sogi until he retired to his cabin each night. And to think, during the few hours when I was not keeping my vigil, this happened. I had to go make a serious tinky. And so, through my own complacency, I allowed him to die. I have failed in my duty. It was all your fault, Nora Hana! Ah, oh, crap, no. Ah! It wasn't me! Ah! I'm no longer worthy of showing my face to either of you. I'm so sorry. Detective Osinaga. Ellipses. Might there be anything I can do to help make amends for this catastrophic failure? If so, please tell me how I can be of service. Get me out of here! Permission to investigate, sir. Right now, we're trying to investigate Sogi's death. I suspected as much. I assume that means you aren't actually the culprit, then. Of course not! I'd like to move to the cabin next door and investigate things there as well. <laughs> I like... I like Susan Toe's little expressions, I don't know. Honestly, all the expressions in this game are really good. Like, the graphics look fucking great. Are you able to grant me approval to leave this room? Or at least stick me over there? I cannot. My apologies. Huh? At present, you are considered to be a threat to the other passengers. If you were to attempt to leave this cabin for any reason, that rowdy sailor would lift you up by the scruff of your neck and toss you right back in. He'd grab you by the scruff of your neck and rip your fucking spine out your back. And all because they think I'm a stowaway and murder one of my own countrymen. Which is stupid. I uh, know. But there may be one chance. Have you anything persuasive I could use to help you move about more freely? 
Will be persuasive, detective. If I think they could provide a reason for you to investigate the other cabin, then I would give my very life, if only to persuade the captain. But that doesn't... that seems a little... I can think of only one method that will work. Huh? What is it? The same method you used on me earlier. I presented evidence to support the argument that you were trying to, to make. Presenting evidence? Ugh! You should already be familiar with it from your time in the courtroom. Just highlight the item you want, then touch the present button. It's as easy as that. Now, should Detective Hosanaga something that might persuade the captain? Something that will give us a reason to investigate the cabin next door. It's not like we want to barge in there for no reason. Something must support our logic. To find the right evidence, and touch present like Zeus is upset. All right! It's time. We saw a speckled band in the air duct. Behold! And this is... It's a Sogi's journal. Poor Kazuma passed away. He left behind some perplexing words. Perplexing? In what way? In this journal, he wrote, I saw a speckled band at the air duct. A speckled band? Perplexing words indeed. I still don't understand the meaning those words hold, but the curious thing is... Ah, yes. The air duct, I presume. You live up to your title, detective. That air duct connects directly to the cabin next door. If we investigate that air duct, we might just figure out what that sp the speckled band is. It's a snack, maybe. I suppose that's proof enough. Huh? Yeah, good enough. Or you could have said, you know, you need to go to the bathroom and run over there. At the moment, I must stay here in this cabin. Until this ship reaches the next port. I must remain on watch at the crime scene. These are the captain's orders. Therefore, I have no other option than to lead the investigation to the two of you. Really? Well, I cannot remove your handcuffs. You may move freely about the first class area. But are you sure it'll be alright? After all, the captain's orders were... <coughs> Do not worry. I will keep my promise. I'll put my life on the line to persuade the captain. In the end, I owe Asogi at least that much after my failure to protect him. Thank you very much, detective. Shall be off then, Naruto. If you touch the move icon, you can move! No way! The moot button, huh? All right, let's try. Here comes Jelly. Here comes Naruto. All right, that means I get at that button and have this guy not chuck my ass across the room. All right, let's go. January 19th, 740 AM. This is Air Claire, first class cabins. Finally, I'm out of the cabin. Yeah, I'm free. Is that a mousetrap in the corner? I think it is. That's a big old hunk of cheese I got there. Still, I'm a little surprised. Or, I'm a little surprised the quarter out here is nearer than you expect, don't you think? It is, isn't it? Cosmo was an exchange student set out by the Japanese government. He was given one of the finest rooms aboard a first-class cabin. If you're wondering, my third-class cabin is about half the size of Cosmo's. That's a pretty cruel treatment you're getting there. Oh god, another burly guy! Oh, take a look over there. There's an incredibly strong sailor sitting on guard. He's really, he is man spreading hard over there. The door connects to the second class cabins. I would think that sailor is on watch to prevent suspicious individuals from passing. Like me. Suspicious individuals? In other words, people like me. Maybe I could just kind of like jump rope through my arms and put them behind my back and then pretend like I'm just kind of strolling along like... Hey, you there! Why are you strolling along so casually? Ah, oh, crap, it didn't work! I can't help but notice that, though we've been aboard for half a month. Your eyes shine as though you're seeing all this for the first time. Well, that's because I am silly! After all, I'm in it's stuck in that dumb room! It was a stowaway. I was packed up in a Sogi's trunk during embarkment. Oh, yeah. Since then, I've been crammed to wardrobe up until today. That must have been... Truly terrible, indeed. <laughs> I like her sort of disappointed face, like... Uh, <laughs> it's not easy looking after you, Naruto. I know. Don't don't look at me like that, please. Stop! Uh. Okay, let's go examine stuff. I see that. I want to check that big-ass mousetrap. 
Look at that thing. Oh, no. Uh, look at that. It's a trap that's used to catch capture rodents. Oh, hey! I've seen these in Japan, too. This one looks like it uses bait and a sticky substance I've never seen before, though. Let's see. The bait is a food called cheese. Oyster-shaped staple made from fermented milk. Wow, really? Wow, I, that's... Huh. I don't know. I, I, cheese is always kind of like one of those in, like super basic things that I kind of thought, like, I don't know, everybody else kind of figured that out at some point, but I guess not. I, I mean, have we heard of rice before the Japanese showed up? I don't know. Maybe. Oh my God! You guys are missing out, man. Just be careful of the French cheese. All right, they get they get a little they get a little crazy with their cheese over there. Cheese? I wonder what it tastes like. Get a bite, man. I see the curious look. Don't try to eat it, or you'll get your finger pinched. Oh, I so should just give up. Were you actually planning to eat it? Well, yeah. All I ever got to eat was Sasogi's leftovers, after all. It's always jamming that wardrobe with an empty stomach. Give me some snacks I brought later on. Yay! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Poor Naruhodo. A little alarm over here. What is this? It's nice and round. It's kind of adds a cute touch to the hallway. It's an emergency alarm. Please don't touch it. But I wanna... Emergency alarm? Look right here. There's a notice. Please press button only in case of emergency. The button sends an alarm to the entire ship, signaling the engines to temporarily stop. Oh. Okay. Makes the engine stop. Maybe. What are you doing? Get away from that! What? what? How is what's happening to me right now not an emergency? That clearly isn't the kind of emergency they mean. Oh god, Susan's a toe mad. Push that button and cause panic. We'd have a real emergency on our hands, and then we'd toss you overboard. Yeah. I wish I could just stop everything happening to me right now. Wish I could stop being arrested. Please don't inconvenience an entire ship of people just because you're upset. Just because you fucked up. I know. I'm just mad. Got some pamphlets or something over here. I see an old oversized ledger book and a pen on the desk over there. Apparently, it's some kind of logbook. Well, shall we take a look inside then? Wow, everything about this voyage is detailed in such beautiful writing. Yeah, never thought these old sea dogs could actually write well. <laughs> what is that? I even complimented him, but he still refused to acknowledge it. Sort of a back end compliment. I think they referred to him as an old sea dog wasn't the best choice of words. Oh, this is this sod. Looks like the pages for last night is almost completely blank. So in other words, the crew members noticed nothing out of the ordinary last night. Hmm, okay. Wow, really? Nope, none of my, uh, my court record? It's a diagram of the ship, the SS Eclair. Three deck structures and so many cabins, what might call us a technological marvel. Actually, I've always wondered, how does such a gigantic hunk of steel manage to float in the ocean without sinking? It's actually rather simple, if you think about it. Huh? Well, think about the islands of Japan. What about them? Even a massive hunk of land like an island floats without effort. So, if you're not surprised that the islands float, then why not be surprised the ships do? Oh, I see. Uh, that's a pretty good point. Except, uh, islands, the land goes all the way into the fucking earth. There's no water beneath the damn island. You silly nuggets. Basically a giant mountain with the bomb touching the seabed. All right, let's go in this room. Here it is. It's the ca cabin adjacent to a Sogis. The one with the connecting air duct. And that air deck was where Cosmo saw the speckle band, apparently. Still might be able to solve that mystery. Let's try and talk to whoever's inside. Oh, Jesus! Hello there, puny man. Does he have, like, stripes on his face? He kind of does. Did he, like... Oh, I think he got, he got sunburned, didn't he? I wonder if that's going to play into something. Um, I... Um... Please excuse us. There's some business we need to attend to in that cabin, you see. You're not much of a talker, are you? Do you have any feet? What the heck? Where's his feet? He says nothing, but his eyes cry out, do not open. That's the same thing I wrote on the slip of paper I had on a sogi to stick to the wardrobe. Sometimes I speak louder than words, I suppose. 
Oh my god, he is! He's missing his feet! Barry's wearing incredibly baggy pants. Well, I would wager that we won't be allowed to visit this cabin anytime in the near future. Yeah, this is inconvenient. Oh, but what do I do then? That's where I'm supposed to go! Right? That's where I came from. First class cabin one. It's our room. It was never your room. It's Cosmo's room. Huh? The only space you can really claim is your own in there is the wardrobe. Yeah. It was so cramped that I could barely even fit inside. It's the life of a stowaway. Speaking of first class, they're the nicest, most spacious cabins in the ship. By the way, while this is cabin one, I was all the way down in cabin 539. Just how many cabins does this ship have? A lot. What do I gotta do, man? You want me to suck up to you, huh? Um, excuse me, may I have a moment? Oh, look! He's the stowaway murderer. Well, that was a nice way for him to crush my spirits right off the bat. If he won't talk to you, perhaps he'd be willing to speak with me. I like how they, see, like, they actually, like, turn towards each other now. Like, they didn't used to do that in previous games, you know? Like, they'd stay pretty much facing forward the entire time. But now they actually, like, will turn towards each other if they're talking to each other, which is really nice to touch. Good morning, sir. May I ask you a few questions? Oh, look! It's the cheap servant girl that was stuffed in the third class with other foreigners. Ha Ow! I see I'm a target for his abuse as well. Sounds like the sailor didn't wake up on the right side of the bunk today, huh? Stop calling me Sailor. I'm Senior Crewman, Mitrov Stroganov. Even though he clearly hates us, I guess we should still try to speak with him. Can I present something to him? Uh, the back out with a no. All right, first class cabins. Um, uh, Mr. Stroganov, can you tell me more about the first class area? Say his name was B. Stroganov. Mitrov Stroganov. Maybe Mitrov means beef. This is where the highest class of cabins are. Gold door connects to each of them. Highest class? Could you tell us more? Only certain people use rooms. Public figures, kings traveling in secret, rich people. Bolton people. So I'm here as a guard. Kings? That's really impressive. But stowaways. Stowaway hides in one of these cabins. On my watch. If I could, I would throw you into the ocean right now and rest easy. Please forgive me. and Don't do that. I bruise very easily. Let me ask a question. Is anyone currently staying in the cabin next to Cosmo Sokis? Dollar! Um. Uh, um, Suzuto, what was that just now? It sounded like da to me. Which means yes, I believe, right? It means yes in Russian. Or maybe it means no. So, one of those two, I guess. I think it means yes. I cannot let you visit other passengers' rooms just because you want to. It means the cabin next door isn't empty. There must be a passenger inside. Interesting. Okay. So, can you tell us anything about the passenger who's staying in the cabin next to Sogi's? The name is Grimm's... Grimsy Mrolet. He's an upstanding old gentleman from the, the West. A gentleman from the West, huh? Do not bother him with pesky questions. He's, no he's knowing nothing about students' murder. How are you able to assert that so confidently? Mr. Grimsby Roylet is a respectable Western man. Why would he care about a lowly Asian children? Harsh words, jeez. Racist much? By the way, when did Mr. Roylet board the ship? You are not needing that information. Now that I'm thinking about it, from the very start of the voyage, right up until this conversation, I've never seen or heard so much as a single hint of that cabin being occupied. The gentleman you speak of is staying in the first class cabin, that would mean... You must be a very important person indeed, is that correct? You are not needing that information. Basket, what's up with your face? <laughs> what's up with your face? Why, why do you mean? Ah! <laughs> Just slugged the chef. Ow! Mr. Stroganoff, have you been a watch here for the entire voyage so far? Yes, I am keeping suspicious people like you from running around this ship. Excuse me, but do you know anything about the incident last night? 
is very sad what happened to student. Going by what you just said, you must have been standing guard here last night too, right? Because you failed! Of course. That during that time, do you see anything out of the ordinary? Er, Suzuzo? From the sound of it, I think he said... Night! Which means no, right? Everything was normal last night. Nothing unusual. What about any odd noises? Or anyone who looks suspicious? No. Everything was normal. S sorry! He did look off to the side when he said that, though, right? I wonder, though. Was it just me, or did Mr. Stroganoff glance away for a second there? Time to use my Apollo powers! Magatama powers! Sonic powers! Is it time to end this little chat? Huh? I just make routine report to the captain. You should admit, return to cabin as well. All right. Door to the second class cabins is firmly locked and secure. Do not bother trying to escape. It is not possible. I understand. Jeez. Now, let's investigate to our heart's content. Absolutely. Okay, so that mean I can go in here now? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I guess I can. Okay. <laughs> I had to talk to him first, basically. Get his okay. They didn't answer. Hello? I don't think we're going to be able to ask any questions about the room right now. Yeah, it's convenient. Aye! What was that voice just now? Came from inside this cabin. It could only be the tearful, innocent scream of a maiden in distress. Uh, By the way, you lot! Ah! Oh, uh, out the way, you lot. I should kick down that door. Post haste. Huh. Mr. Holmes! Where would you come from? Right now, I'm absolutely brimming with the intense desire to kick down this door. <laughs> Please, stay your leg for just a moment. <laughs> this door appears to be unlocked. Seriously? Well then, where exactly am I supposed to vent this urge to kick something? <laughs> I know! Eat this door, Hodo! Um, that aside, let's go inside. This is an emergency. There's no time to waste. Somebody else die? January 9th, this is Claire, first class. Come on, two! Oh, God, it's a Russian guy. Oh, God. Uh, it's a Russian. It's a Russian out there, Russian spist. What do you want with me? I do. It's like, I've done German in a good bit. There's certain accents I haven't done a lot of, so Russian is one that one I need to sort of perfect a bit. Well, this will give me a good opportunity then, right? The Western gentleman appears to be Russian. Excuse me, we just heard what sounded like a young woman's scream coming from this room. Scream. Stop your silly talk. As you see, I am the only one in this cabin. No one else. Don't come any closer. I've got scissors. He's right. This old guy's the only person in here. What on earth was that scream then? That was his scream. Come on. Leave now. All of you. Now. Now. Pardon me, Mr. Grimsby Royalit, I presume. Yes, I'm Royalit. Royalit. Who are you? Sherlock Holmes, the one and the one and only. Surely my reputation precedes me. <laughs> Never heard of him. <laughs> I am the great detective. My name adorns magazine covers all across the British Empire. And so, I am certainly no matter a suspicious individual, as you can see. <laughs> see that magazine like some kind of business card. <laughs> detective, even more suspicious. We are certain that we heard a scream originating from this very room. It is readily apparent that no one is hidden within your wardrobe, therefore. If it is not too much of a bother, may I open that small trunk over there. Stop, stop this silliness. This trunk is very small, very, very small. You think there is a person inside? A very tiny person. Well, if recent trends indicate anything, packing people into luggage is quite popular. <laughs> Please stop looking at me. Oh my god, there is! Huh? D did you see that, Narahodo? Yes, I think I did! The trunk moved, didn't it? All of you leave. Now, if you do not, and call the sailors, I snip you. I snip you good. Grimsby Roylot, stay in the cabin directly next to Sogis. 
Why does he have scissors? This Russian man has to be hiding something beneath that beard. Just like prosecutor to best, right? Yes, my thoughts exactly. We must find some sort of lead before the sailor returns. He was to talk to me. Oh. Da -da 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 -da. That's definitely based off some, I think, classic Russian song. Also, I gotta say, a theme that played when Shock Holmes uh, last episode showed up was pretty catchy as hell. Last night. Excuse me, Mr. Roylott. Uh, can we have a moment of your time? I am not accepting visitors. Um. I talk to no one. Now leave. Not off to a great start. We're not going to get anywhere like this. That's for sure. How am going to deal with this man? Ah! Oh my god, what's he doing? I wonder if the great detective would know what to do. Yeah, better reach out to him. Is he over there in the corner? Oh, he is. I'm playing my Angry Birds game. Except in Great Britain, it's called Angry Bollocks. Of course it is. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Ah, oh, please. Just Mr. Holmes is fine. It's not any less formal. Mr. Holmes, what are you doing in there anyway? Anyway. Oh, not much. Just making my just just making myself at home. At home? I'm just passing the time, imagining how it must have felt to be crammed in here. Waiting for the moment when the two of you beseech the aid of a great detective. <laughs> what? Oh, this song here it is. Da, 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 da. I didn't really notice it the first time. When I went back to it, I was like, God damn, this thing is awesome. Well, now, it would seem that my time, the time has finally come. The time is now. Am I mistaken? Well, he's certainly not wrong. Now, look over there. Scissor man. That Russian gentleman, Mr. Roylet, is clearly hiding something. Now, what would be the best countermeasure against a Russian who's hiding something? The answer, of course, would be the truth. Indeed, that doesn't apply, that doesn't apply to Russians alone. R right But I wonder what the Russian man would do if its hidden secret were to be exposed. Wouldn't it be interesting to find out? I would love to, Mr. Holmes. Then allow me to show you something intriguing. Something only a great detective can do. A great detective's great deduction. Oh god. As you can clearly see, here we have a classic, suspicious-looking Russian. <laughs> what? Sometimes I wonder to myself. Are suspicious people inherently Russian? Or are Russian people inherently suspicious? I don't think either one is the case. If I may add, Mr. Holmes. No matter how much the beard and the dark glasses may seem to suggest it, I'm not sure they're grounds enough to outright label someone suspicious. Yeah, that's profiling, man. And profiling's wrong. Shh, quiet now. I'm thinking. I can see. Why do you look at me like this? I see. Yes, understand now. What? At last, the truth becomes clear to me. There is no room for doubt. Now then, Mr. Roiland, I have arrived at two conclusions. Uh, what do you mean? First conclusion number one. Your true identity. Simply put, you are a villain. <laughs> you are just about to cut short, short something very important to you using those scissors. Am I mistaken? Ah! On to conclusion number two. At this very moment, you have been caught, red-handed in the midst of a nefarious deed. By now, you must be shaking under that beard, panicking over, over if you've already been found out. Am I mistaken? Come here. Here comes our Hodo, one of Mr. Holmes' great deductions. Oh my God! G great deductions. Mr. Holmes is a truly incredible talent. With only one look at a person, you can learn almost everything about them. How in the world? No way. That's impossible. He messed up with me real good. 
The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I've read that book countless times. I can't believe I'm about to hear one of the great deductions firsthand. <laughs> oh, truly, it's like a dream come true. I... It's my fangirl pose. I can't believe it. Mr. Royal just churned white as a sheet. Somehow, it's like those two conclusions hit the mark. How'd he mess up so bad with me that? <laughs> How? How could... How could you possibly know that? Is that what you were about to say? Very well. It's time for the all to be revealed. How, indeed, did this great detective before you arrive at these two conclusions? Come along now. Shall we embark together upon a journey of deduction? What I mean to say is that I'm asking you to tag along with my reasoning. Oh. Deduction start. The game is afoot. Oh god, we're doing something different. Identity. Behold, Mr. Roylet, the mysterious Russian. First, let your eyes be drawn towards this. <laughs> Whoa, that's my like a from. So oversized pair of scissors sticking out like a sore thumb. Now, just what in the devil were you planning to do with those? With just a little observation, the answer becomes obvious. You intended to cut your off your splendid beard with those scissors. Continuing on. Now, now then, why would you have had such an urgent need to cut that magnificent beard? That too is quite obvious, and I have the evidence to back it up. Have a look at this morning's newspaper. It contains a rather intriguing article. Oh. In fact, it appears that you too have seen the article of which I speak. Ah! Surely you must understand by now. The article inside reveals your true identity. The newspaper's revolutionary article. Revolutionary Dmitry Demoglaski flees Russia, believed to be en route to Shanghai. Ah! As you can see, the picture clearly depicts that eye-catching beard of yours. Having seen the article, you plan to cut off your beard before the crow found you, found you out. However, since you have yet to do so, your true identity remains clear. You are none other than the frightful revolutionary, Dmitry Demoglaski. Though, with that said, I can't say I've ever heard of you. Nah. Defected revolutionary! The crime, okay. <laughs> I like his little poses and he keeps jumping around like that. The hell is this guy going on? I mean, I think it's clearly not him, right? I mean... Yeah, it doesn't look like the same guy, to be honest. Yeah, no. Not even the same beard. It's, and the other guy's face is much longer. So I, I saw question marks. I'm thinking I'm going to be doing something like I'm going to be going in and fixing his deductions, right? And making them work. But of course, he's going to probably be the one to get all the credit for everything, right? Next, we have my second deduction. It seems to me that we have caught you in the act of committing a terrible crime. Now, as for the proof of that crime... Aha! It's right over there, is it not? As I expected, it appears that you have shown your hand, Mr. Worland. When people are taken by surprise, they tend to reflexively shift their gaze. Aha! Ah. It is a classic tale, more eloquent and pa more powerful than mere words could ever convey. And yes, our answer lies directly in your line of sight, so carelessly directed. The proof of your crime? Elementary. It's that trunk. Mm, okay, but it's not going to be that, right? It's going to be the bottle and the glass, maybe? Because, yeah, see, we're seeing a question mark, which means it's not quite right. I think it's about time that, that you opened this trunk and showed us what's inside. Mm. No, I, ref I am refusing. Exactly what do you have hiding in there? From what I can see. Were you to apply enough force, I think you could, would be able to open, be able to fit a small girl inside. Th that is silly. A young girl stuffed into a trunk. Just who might she be? I was thinking the ball ballerina girl. Oh, by the way, you guys point out the <laughs> ballerina girl. Her name was Nicolina B something, but 
<laughs> Nikobi! Oh my god! Yes, my female persona, of course. Except with a K. <laughs> Except they spelled Nico correctly. Ah, good grief. You're not much of a criminal, are you? Your line of sight betrayed your secrets so easily. Just now, without a second thought, you took a glance at our answer. The reason why you can't open that trunk can again be found in the newspaper. In truth, it seems that there is yet another intriguing article published in these pages. Rather than looking at the article about the revolutionary, flip to the reverse page. Beautiful flower of prestigious Novavich Nova Ballet Company goes missing. There is only one logical conclusion. The crime you are in the very midst of committing is abduction. According to the article, the girl's name is Nikomina Borshevich. Or something. <laughs> Nico Bizzle! Kidnapped Ballerina! What an amazing deduction! Not amazing, great! And there you have it! The great, great deductions of Sherlock Holmes have been revealed. Goddamn doodly! Uh, Susadel, it's really a great deduction. I think so. I read all about them in his book. Though his great deductions just now were a little different than usual. <laughs> uh, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Holmes. Could, could you come over here for a moment? Ah, oh, what could I do for you? I want to ask about your reasoning there. Yes, yes, by all means. What's on your mind? Well, let me start with this newspaper. I didn't think I'd have to repeat myself, but here we are. These two men's faces are nothing alike. They look completely different. I didn't expect to repeat myself either, but here we are indeed. We're dealing with a revolutionary. Who's to say he didn't revolutionize his own face? At the very least, I suppose he looks more like the picture than you do, Naruto. Oh, well, yeah. That's not the point. Besides that, there's something else. That that bit about the abduction. Ah, oh, yes. Truly a shocking turn of events, isn't it? At first glance, I wouldn't think that a girl could fit inside the truck. Actually, it's worse than that. It's clearly too small to fit a person at all. You'd barely be able to close it, even if you stuffed so much as a five-year-old inside. In that case, could the missing ballerina be a five-year-old? <laughs> oh, didn't you know? She's actually 15! No, Mr. Holmes, I had no idea. So if she's 15, then roughly 10 years of, of her ought to be sticking out that tra- <laughs> Oh my god! There's something I once heard somewhere a lo long, long time ago. In order to make their bodies more limber, some ballerinas would drink vinegar every day. Vinegar? Really? Indeed. The body ripened by vinegar, fitting into a box like that should be no trouble at all. I think you're mixing up acrobatics and ballet dancers. Ah, uh, this is such a mess. Our Hodo, that was Holmes' reason just now. His observations are right on the mark on at least the foundations of what happened. It's just that the focal points and logic are just a little bit off. A little bit? Completely off, I'd say. He's no mother flippin' Edgeworth, that's for certain. We take the most important keywords from his reasoning, and just discreetly replace a few of them here and there. We might just figure this out. <laughs> like a Sherlock Holmes bad lip. So take the keywords from his deductions and replace them? Yes, just discreetly, mind you. If we can do that, I'm sure Mr. Holmes' great deductions will truly come to light. Indubitably. That's exactly what I was thinking. Wow, this great detective is a real piece of work. Well, it seem, seems you've got your work cut out for you, thanks to me. <laughs> sure are laughing loud enough about it. Oh, and as for you, I almost forgot. Me? What is it? Take a look at your hands. My hands? Oh. Ah, the handcuffs are gone. I'm free! <laughs> Make a break for it. What? This is how did? 
thought those cuffs might get in the way of your deductions, so I got them off in a jiffy. Huh? Amazing. I expect to listen to the great detective Sherlock Holmes. What does that have to do being a detective? Ah, there's no need to be worried. I'll put them back on once we're finished here. No, that's okay. You can leave them off, please. Now, why don't we give this another go? Come, one and all, to Sherlock Holmes's Theater of Logic and Reason. No, my turn. Review start. Hold it, Mr. Holmes. Here we go. Behold, Mr. Warlet. Mysterious assassin. Russian, first... First let your eyes be drawn towards this. Do -do -do -do. Silver-sized pair of scissors, sticking out like a sore thumb. Now, just what in the devil were you planning to do with those? With just a little observation, the answer becomes obvious. You intended to cut off your splendid beard with those scissors. Eh? Uh -huh. There it is, huh? Wait, I can feel it. Hmm, those the kind of scissors you cut a beard with? I don't have any intention of ever growing a beard like that, so I don't really know. Not that I could ever actually grow a beard. Hmm, I think Mr. Wallet isn't so sure himself. In other words, this part of the deduction seems a little off. In that case, Narahoda, let's try replacing it with something else. Sounds good to me. How should we go about doing that? First, let's stop and take a good look at Mr. Royland himself. Was it, or was it really the beer that he wanted to cut off? There you go. That's a good question. Next, look for the answer. When you find it. When I find it? Then the rest's in your hands. What exactly is she telling me to do? Okay, I'll give it a try. Time to replace this logic. Was Mr. Royal really going to cut off those scissors? Oh, look at that. Splendid beard, thick hat, sunglasses. Oh, his pretty hair. Okay, so I can actually, I can examine it for it. What, what? Susito, look at this. Oh my, a beautiful golden hair. No, no, I'm not talking about his beauty. Why is his hair even growing here in the first place? Not only that, but it's coming out from underneath a bunch of thick black fur. It's very strange, and it's also curiously beautiful. Is he hiding like a dog under there? Something's clearly wrong here. Pretty <gasps> hair. Hi! Boo! Oh, here we go! Oh, no road of time! You intend to cut off your pretty hair with those scissors. Oh my god, like he's standing there looking all sassy too. Yeah, I'm doing what Sherlock Holmes does, right? I look cool, Susan Tell? Eh. Indubitably. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> do, 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 do. Such beautiful golden locks couldn't possibly belong to an old man. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're actually a woman, aren't you? And judging by your hair sheen, you're clearly a young girl at that. Oh no, you're just the ballerina with the, with I say, with the with a fake beard on your head. Ah. In a very butch voice. If only I had the chance to go to my hair. Then, then I would not be found out. Now then, why would you have had such an urgent need to cut that beautiful hair? That too is quite obvious, and I have evidence to back it up. Surely you must understand by now. This article reveals your true identity. The newspaper's revolutionary article. Wrong. Wow, sure wasn't expecting that. I can't believe that old man was actually a little girl this entire time. What? What is it? Why are you staring at me? Well, it was definitely shocking, but what's even more surprising to me is how much you seem to enjoy this kind of thing. Huh? By your situation, you still ended up jumping around in glee and posing like this weirdo over here. I know, right? Ah, uh, it's just energy's infectious. And just who was jumping around in glee? Not me. It's just that. Fine, fine. I'll leave it at that. Anyway, look at this. Think back to Mr. Holmes' logic earlier. The evidence he brought up seems a little strange now, doesn't it? it does. If Mr. Royalette is really a, is really a woman, then that means the article about the revolutionary isn't related to the case anymore. Because of that, the flow of logic has changed course entirely. What does that mean for us? We should replace this evidence so that it batches the flow of logic. For some reason, that girl needed to hide her true identity. 
And I feel like I heard something about a young girl not too long ago. Oh my god. I understood. All right. I'll give it a shot. Boom. Boom. Now, let's show you how it's done, Holmes. Here I go. This article reveals your true identity. The newspaper's missing ballerina article. Indubitably. Without a doubt, that must be it. Beautiful flower of the prestigious Nova Beach Ballet Company goes missing. I do believe that we are finally able to call you by your real name. Your true identity is the ballerina from the Nova Beach Ballet Company. Nikomina Borshevich. Nico B. Eek! Ah. Of course, I, I should have immediately I don't know, this guy looks so butch. Is that a dainty little girl? Did you poof out your jacket too? Oh God, here we go, guys. Ah! Ah! <gasps> Hello there. It is I, the Nikomina Bolshevich. It is as you say. My real name is Niko, Nikomina Bolshevich. The Russians. Please tell no one. Yeah! Uh! There we go, that's the right answer. Perfected ballerina! That's cool, I like this. This is a, this is a neat little system. That means you didn't kidnap the ballerina. Next, we have my second deduction. Dun, dun, dun. It seems to me that we have caught you in the act of committing a terrible crime. Do do. Now, as for the proof of that crime, aha, it's right over there, is it not? How did you fall for it again? <laughs> as I expected, it appears that you have shown your hand, Miss Nicomina. When people are taken by surprise, they tend to reflexively shift their gaze. Ah! It's a classic term. More eloquent and powerful than mere words could ever convey. <laughs> yes, our answer lies directly in your line of sight. So carelessly directed. Behold. Proof of your crime. Elementary. It's that trunk. Wrong. That girl's actually the ballerina. And there's obviously no way she's packed up in that trunk right now. Right. In fact, the idea that she was abducted at all is not disputable. Then, what exactly is this girl's actual crime? It's like I have no choice. I'll have to take the stage. <laughs> oh, she's drinking alcohol over there. That's what it is. There's a, gla a bottle of glass. She's drinking and she's underage. Narahodo, you're certainly enjoying all this, are you? Damn straight, girlfriend. Jumping around the room and enjoying Mr. Holmes and his theatrics must be so thrilling. Please stop teasing me. I look cool. Right? I look cool, right, Nico? Sure. Sure. Sure you did, Narahodo. Sure you did. Yeah. I know I did. Anyway, some other evidence that reveals a true crime must be around here somewhere. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, oh, the tiara, which you couldn't see from behind the chair. That was actually like glass here. Did I even look at the glass? I can't, weirdly enough. Hi. Tiara. Boom. No, it's just that she stole the fucking tiara. She wanted the money. Prove your crime. Elementary. It's that tiara. No. This must be the, the tiara used on stage by the Novovich Ballet Company, right? It bears a striking resemblance to the one you can see in this news article. According to the article, this TR is valued at 20,000 rubles. In other words, that would make the nature of your crime grand larceny. Ugh! You pilfered that TR from the ballet school you were a member of, didn't you? Eek! No, 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 no. Uh, I am all alone. No allies, no friends. I am needing money to survive. But I did not steal the tiara. That is not true. A Prussian Earl gave it to me. It belongs to me now. This year old girl seeking asylum all on her own. Can't imagine how scared and alone she must feel. Are you happy? I have tell I have told you everything. 
No, not yet. Huh? There's still another mystery left to unravel. I, I, I do not understand. You have obstinately refused my request to have that truck opened and examined. Surely you must have ha have some sort of important reason to do so. Is that not the case, Miss Nicomina? Um. I must keep secret from this man, you think to yourself, but it's futile. I've already found a way to infer the, infer the contents of the trunk you, you see. Ah, good grief. You're not much of a criminal, are you? Your line of sight betrays your secret so easily. Yes, the answer lies directly in your line of sight, so carelessly directed. The reason you can't allow us to open the trunk is written in the books on the shelf. Mr. Holmes' direction has totally changed from what he was saying before. I assume you must have changed directions to Nick Tick or new deductions to account. Oh good, he's not totally stupid then. Even so, he just blurred out that it must be the books on the cabin shelf. Something more than a random guess. It's painfully obvious. What if it's really the case? I mean, no matter what her reasoning is, refusing access or access to the trunk, how could it possibly be written anywhere in those books? It's too convenient. You may be right, but Nikamina did not mistakenly steal a glance at the general direction. So you're saying that the reason is she refused to open the trunk lies somewhere within her line of sight. This this time too? Right. You need to make the same assumption this time around. Why would she open that trunk? The answer to that question has to lie somewhere in her line of sight. Da -da -da. Ah, the the notice about uh, does it, did it say like you can't bring yeah you can't bring uh, animals on board right yeah Hi. What's this got like a dog or something in there. The reason you can't allow us to open the trunk is written on the notice. Do not store any dangerous things, such as weapons or animals, in the cabin. Something inside that trunk is prohibited on this ship. Because of this, you cannot risk opening the trunk and allowing us to examine its contents. Ah! Earlier, we noticed the trunk moved on its own. If you had a weapon hidden in there, that wouldn't expla explain the trunk's movement. And so, only one possibility remains, Miss Nicomina. Inside the trunk. <laughs> ah! Whoa! You're hopping the other thing that kept, kept in the cabin. An animal! Eek! Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh my god. Those two are such dorks. Not kidnap ballerina, but smuggled an animal onto the ship! Crime solved! Case closed. Oh my god! Dis t deduction complete. El elementary! Oh my god, we're like Charlie's Angels there. <laughs> that was so funny. I loved that. That was awesome. So, you're actually... Grim Zero, that is not my real name. It is Nikomena Bozhevich, just as you say. Who disappeared from the ballet school in his performance in, in order to flee Russia. And last night, you ste stealthily made your way aboard this ship. Stealthily? Yes, it's a Claire is a colossal steamship. Is it impossible to board this without anyone noticing? You hastily disguised yourself as an old man in hopes of hiding your true identity. And you decided to chop off that long, blonde hair of yours, along with the rest of your past. Think you would have done that before you got on the ship. However, a woman's hair is cr a crowning glory. It's precious enough to be considered her life. If it were me, I would have refused to cut it off and struggled to find another way. Like stuff under the hat. But if that's the case, then what was the distressed cry we all heard coming from this cabin? Why? Distressed yet beautiful bell-like peal of this lo lovely lady's cries, naturally. That was one loud bell, then. I escaped from Shanghai in fear. I know they had searched for me. I put on disguise so no one can find me. And you ended up taking on the role of a fairly suspicious old man, I see. Thankfully, I find beard my size. 
After I put on beard and hat, I saw a newspaper. Inside was my picture. I was so scared, I shouted without thinking. If I do not do more to change appearance, they will find me. I know that I need cut to cut off hair, so I grabbed scissors. And it was precisely at that moment we enter the cabin. I suppose circumstances like these really do happen every once in a while. Indubitably. Such is the current situation. It's all a lot more confusing than it need to be. <laughs> at least I got to dance around. Excuse me, Nikamina, but is there one last thing that I would there's one last thing I'd like to ask? It's funny that when we did that section, the room was actually reversed. Oh, because we were st wait, no, yeah, why well, was it reversed? Oh, I guess we were just standing on a different side of the room. That's what it was. Yeah. What is that you've been hiding in that trunk? Yeah, that's what it was. Inside, my precious friend hides. Please, please keep secret from Captain Salos, everyone. Well, I suppose that's fine. However. Can he breathe in there? Only if you're, you speak with us of the events that have transpired last night. Understood. Yes, I am talking. So what do you think, Naruhodo? We were able to witness the great deductions of Sherlock Holmes firsthand. To be perfectly honest, I think that I'm still a little confused over which part of this is the great deduction. <laughs> At any rate, at least we can hear what Nikamina has to say now. That's amazing. That's right. It certainly is quite amazing. Ah, that's right. I almost forgot about you. Y yes? What is it? Uh-oh. Take a look at your hands again. My hands? Ah! Ah! The handcuffs! They're back on again! What? Th this... How? As promised, I put them back right where they belonged in Jiffy. Yeah! Where did, when did he even do that? Suspicions cast upon you have not yet been considered cleared after all. We don't have much choice in the matter. I hope you understand. Suppose. Do we really not? At any rate, we ought to listen to what Nikomina has to say. Personally speaking, I'm curious about this mysterious speckled band that Cosmo witnessed. Oh man, we're already pretty far in this episode. It's like, it's, man, this, this investigation section is really long for our first first investigation section, isn't it? I'm trying to see if I should like, should I end it here? But I'm, I'm nervous, like, what if I question her and this is just the end of it? Okay, I decided to actually reach out to one of my moderators who uh, is has been playing this game uh, some and I asked him like, hey, is this investigation going on for a bit more? It is. <laughs> it's, a, it's actually quite a long investigation. So I think this is probably a good place to end things here for now, guys. But this is good. Like, it's actually, I, I like the new gameplay mechanic. Actually, I thought that was really interesting, very different, uh, and also just goofy. <laughs> I, I like how, like, Holmes is just totally messing everything up, but I go in to correct him, and then he goes, oh, of course, that's what I really meant, you know? I don't know, it's interesting. It's, uh, I, I really, I, I really like that. Like, I, I like seeing new shit, you know? That shit, that's the shit that gets me like, yeah, mm, that gets me, that gets me hyped. So I, I look forward to seeing where this, uh, this goes here, and, uh, uh, what she has with this little Russian cross to say. But, uh, anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite, and subscribe for an all rave gumpy penguin. Or this will be... Where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy!